Welcome back to Movies TV Mad. You can follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Mad. Well, they say in Hollywood, timing is everything, and Boris Kitt and the Hollywood Reporter have done this brilliant, exciting spread about the future of DC films, including A Man of Steel 2 being in development. Really, really exciting, right? We'll read it really, really shortly. Unfortunately, unlike the rest of DC Twitter, which is in celebration mode, I'm very dubious about the timing of this article. As you know, I'm very, very cynical about these Black Adam reviews coming later on today, and I believe the Rotten Tomato scores are not going to be great. I really hope I'm wrong. This article seems like something that's supposed to bump up the Black Adam box office and cover up some negative reviews for this movie. Again, I hope the reviews are glowing about Black Adam. You know what I think about the movie. A really, really good movie. It's the movie I expected without being the greatest thing ever. That's my opinion. Now, a lot of the, these plans that I'm going to read in this article are actually Walter Hamada's plans. And as far as we know, right now, this second, Walter Hamada is still the president of DC Films. As far as we know, most of these plans are his plans. Should we get into the article? As I say, I'm very, very dubious about the whole thing. DC at Turning Point, James Gunn pitches secret movie. Dwayne Johnson flexes his Superman power. Exclusive by Boris Kitt of The Hollywood Reporter. Before we get into this, let's talk about this so-called mystery project from James Gunn for DC. Now for days, for days here on the channel, um, we've been discussing this Justice League Suicide Squad team up. Now, we know in Black Adam there are Suicide Squad connections to James Gunn's Suicide Squad connections in the Black Adam movie. These were Walter Hamada's and James Gunn's plans. These were already happening. But if Walter Hamada leaves, are these plans still going to be adhered to? I don't know. Anyway, and just what is Matt Reeves secretly up to? So this is a huge, huge DC article. And, you know, I should be in celebratory mode like the rest of you. The problem is I see through things by knowing the industry and under understanding the industry. Let's have a look. With the release of Dwayne Johnson's Black Adam this Friday and DC Films head Walter Hamada quietly ending his tenure in the coming days, DC is charting into truly unknown territory. So again, we've got this situation with Walter Hamada. Now, there were rumours he's going to stay, and I said I'd be okay with this for consistency's sake. It seems like this article is throwing Walter under the bus a little bit, but they seem to be sticking to his plans, but not sticking with him, according to this article. In fact, without a permanent leader to guide the stable of some of the biggest and best-known pop culture characters in the world, DC is seeing a secret but dramatic land grab amongst some of the biggest players in Hollywood. What does that mean? That means a bunch of creatives who have seen a position going vacant to lead DC are trying to pitch all their ideas while they can. A pitch isn't a green light. So you're going to hear about a lot of exciting plans in this article, but none of them are actually green lit. Johnson is publicly touting his vision for a future Black Adam vs. Superman movie, with his words stoking fan desires to see Henry Cavill return as the red caped hero. Matt Reeves is plotting an expansion of his The Batman universe, while J.J. Abrams remains in the mix as well with his own plans. So, right, the J.J. Abrams thing. This is when, when I first started reading this article, because I don't normally proofread articles, but I'll I proofread this one because everyone's in my DMs, everyone's tagging me saying, Mick, this is amazing. And at first I'm thinking, where is this from? Because sources are important. There's no one, there's no one more respected in entertainment media than Boris Kitt and the Hollywood Reporter. And he is a number one source. And I'm not trying 
to cast aspersions on him or THR. But once I've read JJ Abrams is in the mix, what does that mean? We know that Zaslav and Abrams have come to blows because he's got a non-exclusive, expensive agreement with Warner B. Warner B, Warner Brothers. <laughs> and um, we know that this has been a bone of contention from David Zasler. Anyway, so when I read J.J. Abrams' name, I thought, I'm a bit dubious about this article. But as it says on the top of the article, everyone's pitching because there's no head at the moment. So they're thinking, this is a good opportunity to pitch our ideas and pitch ourselves as the head of this newly formed DC Studios. And the Hollywood Reporter can exclusively report that James Gunn, the filmmaker behind Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy movie, as well as uh, Warner's DC's based The Suicide Squad and Peacemaker, is angling for his own new DC project or two. Sources tell THR that Gunn and producer Peter Safran are in talks with Warner's for a mystery movie. Yeah, and it's not a mystery movie, it's this Justice League Suicide Squad movie that actually even Grace Randolph knows about. So it's not that mysterious, right? A mystery movie, possibly more, that Gunn would tackle. Safran is already in the DC business being a producer on Shazam and its upcoming sequel, as well as Aquaman and, and that movie's sequel. Warner's had no comment but as one insider observed, a carving of the comic company's intellectual assets is happening. DC is definitely in play, says this person. How much play may depend on your perspective from inside or outside the studio. Again, that's a very interesting thing to say. So if you're outside the studio, you don't really fucking know what's going on. And if you're inside the studio, even they may not know what's going on because they haven't decided yet. While it isn't clear what hero or team's gun is targeting, it is, by the way, we just discussed it, and the writer-director would focus on a second season of Peacemaker first. We know that already. The studio's eyes are very much on Superman under Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Zaslav and Warner Brothers Pictures heads Michael DeLuca and Pam Abbey. Warner's has an intense desire to reprise the Cavill iteration of the hero. Well... Because we know there's a post credit scene with Cavill's Superman in it, that makes sense. But hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. That was done a few, let's say, a few months ago when Zaslav first arrived. So this is part of his planning. He does want a Cavill's Superman movie. He wants Superman front and centre. So this is not really big breaking news. That's obvious, but we don't know how, that, how far that development structure they've got to. Anyway, the project that would essentially be Man of Steel 2 is being produced by Charles Roven and is currently in a search for writers. There is a wish list, of course, and Christopher McQuarrie, the hand that guides the Mission Impossible movies, was on it. McQuarrie worked with Cavill on the 2018 instalment, Fallout, but sources say no official outreach has been made, nor uh, may it be feasible as the director is working on the next back-to-back -back impossible storms. Right, let's talk about Christopher McQuarrie, a brilliant guy who's very transparent on Twitter with his fans and people asking questions. Good man, great director. Why are they mentioning his name? Well, what they don't mention in this article is that Chris and Henry Cavill pitched a Superman movie idea to WB back in 2018, 2019. That pitch was rejected. So it's not rocket science for a journalist to pluck Christopher's name out and say, oh, they're looking at Christopher McQuarrie. Maybe they are, but it's easy to pluck his name out. If I'm being cynical, because he and Henry Cavill have already pitched a studio an idea for a Superman movie. Anyway, Johnson, however, has Superman plans of his own and has been very vocal about his desire to make a Black Adam versus Superman movie, a desire he has only reiterated more frequently in the lead up to Adam. Now, look, everything that Dwayne has been saying is great and I've, I really respect his marketing drive. I've never seen a marketing drive for a movie like this in my life. It's brilliant. But all the stuff he's saying is to push this movie, to make this movie as much money as possible for his company, Seven Bucks, for Warner Brothers, and because he wants to make more. 
So he may want to do a Black Adam versus Superman movie. It doesn't mean he's going to get to do it. If this movie is successful and people like it, he's got a great chance. But if, 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 that's the problem here. This comes as he talks up his surprise cameo at the end of Adam with the actor all but stating that Cavill will appear. Insiders are wondering if those calls are intended to goose the movie's opening weekend box office. Of course they are. That's the whole motivation. Numbers are to manoeuvre Superman onto his own ch chest square. Or perhaps both. Yes, both. He calls he loves. Look, I think The Rock is a genuine dude. I really do. But he's also a very intelligent dude. He wouldn't be in the position of power in Hollywood today if he wasn't. Now, his films have been solidly successful, but he's never done any, he's never starred in anything that's been overly successful, but has done well for sure. And people like his movies. Again, whatever the case, Johnson is definitely at the centre of Cavill's return to DC, which was not without some drama of its own. Johnson's manager is Danny Garcia, his former wife, who is also his producing partner at Seven Bucks Entertainment. Garcia also happens to represent Cavill. So we all know that already. Superman as well as Cavill were not in the initial plans for Black Adam. The idea was hatched during a round of reshoots for the movie earlier this year. But the cameo was nixed by Hamada, the executive who for the last four years had tried hard to move DC beyond the era where one filmmaker, in this case Zack Snyder, had an inordinate amount of influence and could command an entire slate for years. Hamada had his own Superman plans, one of them involving introducing a black Superman with a multi-decade spanning story by writer Tanashi Coates. Right. Here you can see that Walter Hamada has been thrown under the bus. It wasn't Walter Hamada who didn't want Henry Cavill's Superman. It was his boss, Toby Emmerich, the, the chairperson of Warner Brothers Pictures. Hamada was having his strings pulled and the black Superman thing was J.J. Abrams' brainchild with Tanashi Coates. So they had spent a lot of money in bringing Abrams and his bad reboot that's that's what they call that's what that's the nickname that's the Xerox 3 nickname it's actually bad robot production company so this was their brainchild this was supposed to replace Henry Cavill's Superman but be an independent Superman property and not be part of the DC extended universe but this was all down to Toby Emmerich not Walter Hamada I want to be clear here because as a respectable journalist Boris Kitt isn't detailing to you the truth and here on Movies TV Mad, we speak hard truths, even if they're uncomfortable truths. After Hamada said no, Johnson went around the executive, turning to DeLuca and Adby, who gave it the thumbs up. A furious round of negotiating occurred before Labor Day, a deadline insisted by Warners, with the scene shot in mid-September. Um, mid-September. Um, was it mid-September? Hmm, I don't know. No, I don't think it was mid-September. I think Boris is kind of guessing there. I think it was maybe three or four months ago when The Rock was saying we're just finishing things up. Maybe it was then. Maybe Boris is right. I don't know. It's just semantics, isn't it? Anyway, I digress. Meanwhile, in Gotham City, filmmaker Reeves is quietly making his own expansion plans. Reeves is developing a sequel to his The Batman, which grossed a respectable 770.8 million worldwide when it was released in March. Already a series spin-off focusing on Colin Farrell's Penguin is on its way to filming next year, but Reeves is plotting more. The filmmaker is meeting with writers and directors to build out movies. Yes, movies, not just series, focused on Batman Rogues Gallery. Both established and more obscure, with characters ranging from the Scarecrow to Clayface to Professor Pig. All those projects are in the very early stages of gestation. Right, let's stop there. If this article is make-believe, it wouldn't be that difficult to say, oh, Matt Rees is developing Clayface. Uh, Mr. Pig or whoever he was just talking about, right? You know, it, these are obvious things to say. So clearly they've got a source somewhere, but also the timing of this article is very suspicious to me. And I'm sure you'll be, you're, all you pure DC fans are becoming very frustrated with my negativity. 
but I can't help but be cynical about this whole thing. It is unclear where the Superman, uh, say that again, it is unclear where the Superman moves leaves Abrams, who is still on track to produce Coates movie centered on the last son of Krypton. He is not on track to produce that movie. The guy hasn't completed any scripts, right? Um, Zaslav isn't interested in a black Clark Kent. It's as simple as that. I'm not interested in a black Clark Kent either. I am interested in black Superman like Val Zod and President Superman. I'm not interested in a black Clark Kent. It is not happening. So here Boris Kitt is talking absolute bollocks. Sorry for my language. Coach movie centered on the last son of Krypton. That feature would exist outside any larger DC movie. It's simply not happening, people. Continuity, much like Todd Phillips' Joker movie, the mega producer had a few setbacks when some of his DC shows based in the supernatural corner of DC and featuring characters such as Constantine and Zaytana were scrapped at WBD's HBO Max streaming service. They are now being shot to other streamers. Right, you are not going to see those projects. I repeat, you are never going to see those projects. Because people think I'm a fucking random loser, who hasn't got a lot of subscribers and views and likes, nobody fucking believes me. But the information I get, my hunches, mixed in together, are normally right. And you guys who have been following me since the birth of this channel in 2018 know that. Everything I said about the Batman was true. I saw the Aquaman movie in 2018. I told you it was a modern day classic. It was a modern day fucking classic. It's an amazing movie. I can be wrong sometimes, but mostly, I'm fucking right. But he's not out of the game and is yet another Hollywood power in the mix vying for a piece of the DC pie. He's absolutely out of the mix. The only way J.J. Abrams gets to be anywhere near anything DC if he agrees to write and direct a Henry Cavill Superman movie. Now, this would be a very, very controversial choice for a lot of people because JJ hasn't got the respect he had in the alias Lost and Fringe days, not even with me, which is a shame because one of the reasons I got into this game was because of Doctor Who's Russell T Davies, JJ Abrams. You know, it, back in the day, these people were in my inspiration. JJ Abrams co-created Lost was one of the reasons I created my story Trapped, which I'm developing for Cypriot Television. I've already performed it in a play as well, with other cast members, of course. So J.J. Abrams, no doubt, was a huge inspiration for me. But the only way he gets in this is if he writes and directs a Henry Cavill Superman movie. That could be exactly what happens. Would I be against this? No, because despite the common myth, to, in today's world about J.J. Abrams, he did Star Trek 2009. He got that fucking film right, Trekkies. I don't care what you say, he got it right. He created a modern day version of Star Trek, making the original, um, you know, crew of the Starship Enterprise canon, but creating another timeline. It was genius. Chris Pine was a fantastic modern day Captain Kirk. All his castings were amazing. It was a great movie. Some say he dropped the ball with Star Trek Into Darkness. I don't think Star Trek Into Darkness is a bad film. It's a good film that isn't really a Star Trek film. That's the problem with that one. Anyway, all of this takes place as Hamada, who did not attend the Adam premiere in New York on top of the tw October the 12th, packs away the final personal effects from his Burbank studio lot office ahead of his last day sometime this week. The executive is not even taking a producing deal with the studio. A move that is traditional amongst execs who are being let go but given a soft landing and a courteous thank you for your service. Too, too, ma too many the action speaks volumes about how rough the transition from the AT&T era to Discovery under Zaslav has been, has been including the controversial cancellation of the Batgirl movie in August. Right, let me talk about Hamada. Imagine being Walter Hamada. You had a cushy plum role at New Line Cinema as the head of their horror division. A successful horror division. It, The Conjuring, etc, etc. Because he's been a Warner Brothers man all his life, they put him in that prime position as DC Films president because Emmerich thought 
they could rely on him to nix Zack Snyder. You know what I mean, right? Wink, wink, nod, nod. And they, he was a company man. And he did what they wanted him to do. Ray Fisher exposed him in a way. And that made his name poison to fans. And he couldn't talk publicly to fans about DC anymore. His position was untenable. So now he has to leave the fucking company entirely if we believe this. I think... That's actually unfair because many of the DC decisions weren't even his. But he's been a good boy and now he's going to lose his job. I'm not saying he won't be able to eat at night. But if I was Walter Hamada, I would be absolutely devastated right now. Oh, thank you for that. I hate pop-ups, don't you? Right. And it takes place in the shadow of the utter failure of the search for a new leader. After months of searching, Zaslav came close to hiring executive turn producer Dan Lin. This is not true. Lin was one of the people on the list, but he was never offered the job for the role of DC chief. But talks fell through. No, they didn't. Part of Zaslav's intent for Lin was to act as the overseer of all things DC, both film and series. And he would have acted partly as a traffic cop amongst the IP. For now, DeLuca, who is known for his fanboy roots and displays a deep knowledge of a, a st historic comic lore, remains firmly, firmly in charge of DC. So, right, co-chair, along with Pam Adby, Mike DeLuca of Warner Brothers Pictures, is now running like the newly formed DC Studios. He's in charge for now. Maybe on a temporary basis, but if things go well, I think he'll get it full-time, and Pam Adby will be the full-time chair of Warner Brothers Pictures. I predicted this in the past. I think this is where we're going with this. So, where are we? Remains firmly in charge of DC. He greenlit Joker 2, has been making decisions on Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom and The Flash, and has been meeting with filmmakers. Rumours abound that his role could evolve into one with a more permanent and even exclusive oversight of DC. Let's hope so, because DeLuca is a really good guy. As for Johnson, last week he publicly expressed interest in helping guide the search for a DC boss. This is what he said. The best position I could be for DC is one as an advisor where I can help. I love DC. It's my blood. It's in my blood. Johnson told Variety on the Adam Red Carpet, in the spirit of growing up with the DC Universe, I'm here to help in any way I can, including looking for and finding that right leader or leaders. That search marches on even as IP continues to be taken off the board by power players. Right now, it's the Wild West, says one insider. Everyone is trying to grab as much as they can, and this is exactly what happens in a leadership vacuum. But they can try and grab as much as they can. It doesn't mean Zaslav is going to allow their paws to wash off the butter. What I'm trying to say is nothing is set in stone here. One Warner's insider disputes the idea of a leadership vacuum, saying the studio is not standing still and is moving ahead on several fronts, focusing on some of its A-list characters while planning and developing the wave beyond that. A, a, a scriptment for Wonder Woman 3 by Patty Jenkins is expected imminently, and a script for a Flash sequel is already written by Aquaman scribe David Leslie Johnson McGoldrick. Right, McGoldrick... Is a really good writer and he co-wrote Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom with Jason Momoa. Interesting, right? Here's the thing about this because again, Twitter is making assumptions. Hollywood Reporter, Boris Kitt, this is all official, we're getting this, we're getting that, we're getting Superman, we're getting the other. Hold your fucking horses. This Flash sequel was written ages ago under the Hamada leadership. If Hamada is actually going, and he has, now apparently he's leaving at the end of this week. Let's find out if he is. I think in a week or two, we're going to find out some very interesting things, and we'll find out how accurate this article is. But, hold your horses. This Flash sequel hasn't been greenlit. Not by Zaslav, and not, like, not by DeLuca. So even though it's there, they were the previous plans. The Justice League Suicide Squad movie by James Gunn, it's not a mystery, that's the fucking movie, was greenlit by Walter Hamada and Toby Emery. May not be happening anymore. Hold your horses. 
In case that movie to be released June 23rd, 2023 does well, the film stars co controversial actor Ezra Miller, who in August met with Warner's leadership after a string of arrests and bad headlines, and today pled not guilty to a felony burglary charge. With Superman back on the active block, plus Reeves, the Batman sequel moving forward, it puts the company's big stars in the big screen rotation. DeLuca and Abbey are said to want to... to Let's say it again, DeLuca and Abby are said to want to more things in development and more things on the runway ready to go on opposite ethos from Hamada, who took a more targeted approach. Now, Hamada's problem is, let's look at 2023 originally. We were going to have four movies come out this year. The Batman, The Flash movie, Aquaman and The Lost Kingdom and Black Adam. But he did only had Blue Beetle coming out next year, and maybe Batgirl. So this targeted approach is bullshit. So there, Hamada was absolutely incompetent. But was it just him, or was it more about Toby Emmerich being incompetent? If you're the president of DC Films, and you've got to wait for permission every five minutes, how can you run DC Films? Nobody tells Fade what to do. Although that's been problematic with phase four, at least he can make his decisions and go with his decisions. So Johnson for one is keen on moving beyond DC's A-list. As he told the New York Times for a profile published Monday, it's the safer bet to continue to invest in the IP that the world knows. The Justice League, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Flash, Ackman. I understand that, but it took convincing to get the studio to look past the Justice League into the DC Universe and there's some really cool characters there. You've just got to give it a shot and trust the investment. Right, The Rock is not saying I want to ignore the Justice League and Superman on all these characters, right? He's saying for Black Adam, I wanted to move past the Justice League and bring in the Justice Society of America. Now, this is why I think this is a very dubious article because Boris Kitt seems to be playing with a lot of words. Be very careful. I'm trying to educate you here so you understand what's going on. And that is the article, my friends. So I'm going to press pause, prepare myself, and then we're going to discuss this. So let's talk about what we know. I think you can ignore everything in this article apart from Matt Reeves' plans which are fucking obvious. He's had the green light to do whatever the fuck he wants. He didn't mention Todd Phillips in this article who's also been told you can do whatever the fuck you want. Here's the keys to DC Black Label. It's all yours. He made a billion dollar movie. He did the fucking excellent Hangover trilogy. So that's a given, right? Because Zaslav is all about reputation and good old school reputations. You need to put these properties in solid hands. So you can ignore everything apart from the Matt Reeves stuff and the Superman stuff. What do we know about Zaslav's plans for Superman? We keep on hearing this, it's The Rock, it's The Rock, it's The Rock. The Rock was trying to get Superman back into play, you know, starring Henry Cavill, and they said no. The only reason you're seeing Henry Superman in Black Adam, yes, The Rock tried, well done for that, that's not the reason he's in that movie. The reason he's in that movie is because Zaslav wanted it. Now, it was easier to make it happen because he is under the management of Seven Bucks like The Rock and, you know, the movie, the movie you know, Black Adam was produced by Seven Bucks bucks co-produced by seven bucks as well so it was easier to do and cavill trusts them so it was easier to get him in to get cavill to agree they would have had to agree to what he wants what does cavill want and i want you all to open your fucking ears and listen to uncle mick you really do and if my nephews and nieces are watching, I'm already Uncle Mick, although I'm Uncle Mike to them. But on the internet, I'm Mick, because Mick sounds a little bit cooler, right? So listen to Uncle Mick. I want you to understand, especially the Snyder fans, Henry Cavill does not like the way Superman was portrayed in, not betrayed, portrayed in Batman versus Superman Dawn of Justice. But some see that as a betrayal. Of course, he doesn't like that. He doesn't like the dark, evil big red heat vision coming out of his eyes, making him look like the fucking devil. That's not who Superman is. 
Superman is an inspirational hero, and that is what Cavill wants to portray going forward. He likes the Man of Steel Superman, it, but, you know, basically he likes that Superman, but there are issues there for Henry as well. But he mainly likes the course Superman went on in that movie. But he also told them at the end of Man of Steel, right, I've broken this villain's neck. I want this to mean something. I want this to mean that I've learned in this moment that I know what it's like to kill someone and I'll never do it again. So Cavill has always been pretty clear that he wants Superman to be Superman, not some real world you know, guy. He wants Superman to be the myth. We, most Superman fans, want this. And the only people who don't want that are people who kind of like Superman when they first watch Man of Steel. Fair enough. Everyone can love what they love as long as they don't hate what other people love, right? Cavill wants a traditional Superman. They've clearly agreed to this because Zaslav is old school anyway, and he would want that as well. So they've obviously agreed to Cavill's demands, and Cavill's demands were never fucking financial, considering he got less than Adams, he got less than Affleck within the DCEU. Some people say even Gal Gadot gets paid more than Henry Cavill ever fucking did. So have some of that, Grace Randolph. So, the Superman rumours are obviously true, because Zaslav made the decision to put him in that post credit scene in Black Adam. So they are moving forward with Superman. Now Henry Cavill, Cavill's schedule is very, very busy. That's a given. They'll push him in for cameos and try and get him in, I don't know, in, in a Superman movie. There's this mystery project by James Gunn, which is basically a Justice League Suicide Squad crossover. I don't know whether or not they're still in the plans because these are Hamada's plans. Most of the stuff that he's listed Boris Kitt in this article are Hamada's plans. So the only exciting thing here, the most exciting thing here, it looks like we're full speed ahead with Superman. As for the rest of it, I'll repeat again, the Hamada's plans, they may happen, they may not happen. Would they go through with Hamada's plans and get rid of Hamada? Doesn't that seem unlikely? Because if you like Hamada's plans, then you like Hamada. If you don't like Hamada's plans, then you don't stick with the plans and you don't stick with Hamada either. I'm not sure the Walter Hamada situation is as over as Boris Kitt suggests. Watch this space. You have every right as a DC fan to read this article and be absolutely fucking excited. But think about the timing. It's a few days before Black Adam is released. This article was released a whole 24 hours before the full reviews of Black Adam are going to be out there. So it sounds like my suspicions about low Rotten Tomato scores and not very good reviews are actually accurate. No one wants to be more wrong about that than me. We will wait and see what happens. David Zaslav and Mike DeLuca will make the right decisions. I have no doubt about that. I have no doubt we are going full speed ahead on a Superman movie starring Henry Cavill. Whether the James Gunn mystery project happens or not, we'll have to wait and see. Someone who wasn't mentioned in this article, surprisingly, is Ben Affleck's Batman, which proves they don't know very much because if Affleck, Affleck is coming back and basically we know that the DCEU fucking needs a Batman, is it Keaton? Doesn't mention Keaton, the future of Keaton. Doesn't mention the future of Aff Affleck in this article. So what's going to happen? My guess is Affleck is back full time. And although I don't think the Snyderverse is completely going to be restored, I can see a scenario of this, maybe his Batman movie coming into the mix again. Maybe. Basically, the DCEU don't have a fucking Batman after Flashpoint, apart from Michael Keaton, who in Batgirl was barely dressed as Batman. He was mostly old man Bruce Wayne. That simply won't cut it. So my final line on this article and the future of DC is that I think the situation is in flux. It's being handled. They will announce a leader. If it's Mike DeLuca for DC Studios, 
the guy who produced the first blade and maybe even the second blade, well, we are, you know, we have got the crown jewels and we should treasure them. Now, in terms of these upcoming DC movies, which are part of War Tamada's vision, if they fail, they can blame him. If they succeed, they can show him respect. That's why I think I'm not convinced about War Tamada leaving now. He wasn't at the Black Adam premiere in New York. That would suggest that he is leaving, and he may be leaving. That is an easy bet to make, right? But this is Hollywood, and things change very, very quickly. So normally I would be very, very excited about an article like this, but all I see is a lot of recycling in this article. Yes, the most exciting thing is that Superman is back with us, but we don't know the plans yet. Everything, look, The Rock's not fucking in charge of anything. Let me make that clear. The Rock's not running anything at this point. He's mouthing off so he can sell his movie. I respect him. I like him. I, thought, I think Black Adam is a really, really good, solid movie. Nothing more than that. But he's not making any decisions here. Now, if his movie's successful, he gets more power within the DC Universe. We'll have to wait and see about that. You don't control that, I don't control that, and The Rock doesn't. He's tried his best to push his movie out there. It's a wait and see scenario. But at this moment in time, I believe we're exactly in the place we were before reading this article, where potentially Superman is back because he's in a post credit scene. That decision was made by David Zaslav himself. Nobody else. Not The Rock, not Seven Bucks. David Zaslav. He has got his finger on the chicken switch, and that's great. I believe if Hamada goes, all these plans you hear about, apart from Matt Reeves, the Batman, obviously, and the Superman plans are in the dump. A lot of these plans are Hamada's plans. So at the moment, we're pretty much in the dark. This is what I think they're, what they're waiting for. I think they want to see how Black Adam does, the Flash movie, Blue Beetle, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. They want to see how the Hamada movies do. There's no question. The first chapter of this is Black Adam. And if Black Adam was to do well, I think it'll be very, very interesting to actually see what happens to Hamada. But Hamada and Emmerich didn't want Cavill Superman involved. So if this film does do well, people are gonna say it's because Superman's in the movie, even though he's only in it for 15 or 25 seconds, that's a big pull. We will have to wait and see, of course. So I'm confident about the future of DC, but I'm not very confident about the integrity of this article. This has been Movies TV Mad. I'm Mick, your host with the most. Just ask your girlfriends and your wife. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you never miss this beautiful perfection. And I'll see you again in the next video. Until I see you again, goodbye, au revoir, au revoir.